Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video by Sheikh um, Yusuf Estes and of course a Catholic sister asked him why did he accept um, Islam. Of course he's going to provide us with a response concerning this very question that this sister asked of Yusuf um, Estes. I believe that it's going to be a very educative video for us to learn from the shake so if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video i'm a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's religion this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further ado let's Let's get down to this video and check this out. Sister, um, thank you for waiting. Would you please state your name and occupation, then state your question? I'm Sakina de Souza, and uh, I'm a Catholic. I believe uh, Brother Yusuf was a Catholic before. I would like to ask him the simple question. He was brought up like a Catholic, but what made him change? Doesn't he believe that the Messiah is true? Or did he ever feel that the uh, religion, Catholic religion, has not brought up any Messiah and the Bible is false? I would like to just know what that means. Because he said he was a Catholic before and now he has become a Muslim. What made you change? What was that storyline before? Doesn't he believe that there is a Messiah? Or the Messiah had come, saved us, died on the cross? Thank you very much for a good question. I hate to disappoint you, but I wasn't a Catholic. But I was with a Catholic priest the night that he accepted Islam. And I asked him these questions you asked me. Because after all, I was still a Christian, a preacher in Christianity, and I wanted to know why my best friend, a Catholic priest, had converted. That's a pretty weird thing. A Catholic priest is not like a regular preacher in the Protestant religion. A Catholic priest has given up his, given up everything. He's given up his life to be a Catholic priest. When he enters into this realm, he's basically given away everything. He can't have a wife, he can't have children, obviously no grandchildren. He has no home, he just lives in a rectory or wherever they give him a place to stay. And he's sent wherever they tell him to go, do whatever he's told to do, and that's it. And he cannot disobey the Pope, otherwise they can kick him out of the religion. And if they do, he's excommunicated and he goes to hell forever. So how would a person like this want to become one of those Muslim terrorists? That's what I wanted to know. He explained in a very few beautiful words something that I came to learn for myself. He said that he was sincerely in the Catholic religion because he believed in God. That he had studied his degree was in theology, and a part of the teaching that they as priests have is to study Islam. Every priest is forced to study Islam. Now you may not know that, but you can ask your priest and he'll confirm it. And when you study Islam, even when Islam is taught to you by somebody who hates Islam, as long as they don't corrupt it too far, you can still see the truth in Islam. A classical example happened to me just recently when I was in Saudi Arabia. A friend of mine, very old copy of one of the first Qurans ever translated to English by George Sale. George Sale hated Islam, he hated the Muslims, but when he translated the Quran to English, he was true, he was true to the text of the words. Although maybe not getting all the meaning, he certainly was true to the text of the words. I was shocked when I read it. Have you seen it? You know what I'm talking about. Amazing. And listen to this. George Bernard Shaw, for instance, is one of many, a long list of people who read this and realized the truth of Islam. When people see the truth of Islam, it can change them if they want to be guided. If they want the truth, it can change them. You might think, I'm a Catholic, I'll never be anything but a Catholic. But I'm going to ask you a question. 
And I want you to be honest. This is not for you to, you know, start a debate, but just be honest. Was Jesus a Catholic? And it's not open to debate, so there's no point in opening that up because you know and I know he wasn't. The Catholic Church was in business about 300 years before Jesus was born. It's on their website. Don't go like this. It's on their website. That's where I took it from. The Catholic Church was really started in Rome by Alexander the Great. Do you know what the word Catholic means? It means universal. It was the universal church for the Roman Empire. If you didn't join it, you could not be a Roman citizen. And it was opposed to the teachings of Judaism and opposed to the teachings of the early Christians for more than 200 and some years. And they were diametrically opposed to each other to the extent that it was the Romans killing the early Christians. Now, if you understand that and you go to their website and read, they didn't even take over Christianity until the year 325 A.D. And when they did, they changed a lot of things. Again, referring to their own website. But if you want to check it in Brand Britannica or Americana or Grolier encyclopedias, go ahead and read about the Catholic Church. When, in August of 325 A.D., at the Nicaea Council, they took over, first thing they said was, let's change the date of the birth of Jesus to be the same date as that of Mithras which was the god, one of the gods worshipped there, and also the sun god's birthday was the same day, December the 25th, believing it to be the shortest day of the year. And Constantine was a sun worshipper of Saul Invictus. Go to the website, read it for yourself. There are a lot of points, but not the least of which, even today, if you go in any Catholic church, and I have, you'll see so many portraits and statues and idols and images throughout the whole place. That for the one who's never experienced that, for a Muslim who knows about these images, he'll be like, whoa, I was a beloved. Whoa, what's this? The first time I walked in a Catholic church, I was about 10 years old. I was shocked. I was shocked at the idols and statues everywhere because in the Protestant religion, we were brought up to believe that the second commandment was just as important as the first commandment. The first commandment in the Bible in Exodus is the same as the first commandment in the book of Deuteronomy. It says, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt in the house of bondage. You know no other God beside me. Beside me there's no other gods. Thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. How many in this room agree with that commandment? Raise your hand. You notice the Muslims are raising their hand. Because it means, Ashadu la ilaha illallah. That's the first commandment for us as well. The second commandment you have clearly says thou shalt now make any idol, any graven image of anything that creeps upon the earth, swims in the sea beneath, or flies in the air above. And I was sitting in a church one time, sitting there in the morning service, watching, you know, the preacher talk. And, you know, they go on and on and on. And sometimes you lose your train of thought. I was looking. Whoa! On the front of the podium, there was a fish. A fish. For the symbol, make you fishers of men. It had a fish. I said, whoa. Then I looked up above his head at the big stained glass window, and it had a dove. And he had the, the olive branch in his mouth. The dove is flying, the bird, you know? I said, whoa. And then I look over here, and there's a cross with a man hanging on it. I said, wow, they didn't miss a single one. They got them all. Something walking on the earth, something swimming in the sea beneath, something flying in the air above. So look at these two things. Clearly, the first two of the Ten Commandments, bang, bang, boom. Because if you said God is more than one, where did you get it from? When Jesus is talking to his own companions and they ask him, what's the greatest commandment? Mark 12, 29. Clear. The greatest commandment is to know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. And you have to love him with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. And this is no different from what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was saying the same thing to his people. Same thing I mentioned in the lecture. 
This is certainly for us the same. So what you see is Muslims practicing the commandments, and you see people claiming the commandments, but practicing something else. And I have seen more converts from the Catholic Church than any other of the many sects of Christianity, and especially from the nuns, priests, and even an archbishop. And all of them are better than me. Those guys and women that I see do this, they still sacrifice their whole life to get the true message of Islam, not only to you, but to Muslims as well, because we all need to know about it. But thanks for a great question. Wow. This is a very interesting um, video by um, Yusuf Estes, of course. He was able to respond to the lady, even though I may not be fully satisfied with um, some of the things that um, Yusuf Estes was pointed out as being one of the reasons. If you hear him out, all he was saying is that he converted to Islam because he saw the prisoners and converting to Islam. And then him too was asking, you understand, the priest, you understand, the same question that the lady was also asking him. Why is he converting? But then when you look at it in a sense critically, of course, he went on to start explaining the Catholic Church as being the universal church and then how um, the Romans as of then, of course, uh, they decide to be changing things first of all by changing the birth, the date of the birth of Jesus Christ, and all those things. But then to talk about and understand the birth of Jesus Christ, I think that when you look at it, that um, before they were using the Julian calendar, right? Because we have the Julian calendar and then the Gregorian um, calendar, and that is why you see the birth of the Jesus Christ, you understand differs so if you use the julian calendar it gives you a different date when you use the gregorian um, calendar it gives you what a different date and that's why you see um when it comes to january that's when you see those who are supposed to use the, Ju the julian calendar for instance like the ethiopians for instance you see that um some of them end up celebrating their christmas in january why because they still use the julian um calendar now when you look at some of those things that um yusuf estes you understand was still talking about about um um the catholic you understand putting images and all those things and then making a reference to exodus chapter 20 now we are talking about the 10th commandment or either you use exodus or deuteronomy all the same all of them still stay so the second commandment was saying that what you shall not make any image in place of me so he feels like for some of the images that they put around of course it's just like uh you're doing idol worshiping and then therefore some of those things in the sun is wrong and then being one of the reasons why the press in the sun decide to accept um islam of course there is no doubt that, of course, we know that they made a lot of changes, you understand, in the Bible, and that is what resulted to some of the contradictions that we normally talk about um, today. But then I feel like instead of uh, Estes to just leave the church, it's not going to be better for him to stay behind so that we can be able to figure out some of the things that the change that the romans decide to change so that we can be able to like fix it right it's just that we have a problem right and then instead of us to stay back and then see that let's fix the problem in a sense together and then you decide to identify another religion and then decide to go instead of wait behind or try to see that we can be able to to fix the problem and then he decide to leave well as for me i will not deny the fact that i have not um hear about the message of prophet muhammad or him being the messenger of god just like how i used to say in my videos that, that i believe that he is uh the messenger of god and then the truth about it is just like how i say is that i didn't want to make a very harsh decision without making a lot of findings so i felt like it's better for me to make a research for myself because the truth about it is if by today i accept islam it's not just about like me as an individual who is just accepting the Islam, but 
I know that it's not that I am being proud or something, but then I know that a lot of people are going to accept Islam if I made that very decision. So it will not be a good thing for me to just jump and just make this very decision. So it means that I have to make a lot of research so that whatever decision in a sense I am making, I know that it can be able to affect in a sense a lot of people too. I used to say to you guys that of course that I'm making my own research and if I feel it's the right way, so be it. Whatever it is, that is the reason why I cannot condemn but then for the meantime, I'm a Christian. And then I don't know if maybe some of you can see from my phone, I just installed this um, very Quran because I've been trying to buy a Quran or it has not been possible. All right, I've been trying my best but then it has not been possible so i just installed this i don't know if maybe some of you can see this from the camera or something like that <laughs> well i do not know so this quran is actually from um is it muslim pro something like that here yeah. that's when i was able to get it because i've been trying to buy and then all those things thing is not coming so i went on you see this is um surah fatiha right yeah at least the beginning chapter so it means that i don't want to say much about some of the things that i have learned so far but i want you to understand that i have started reading the quran so until maybe probably next month i believe that i must have read it to some kind of level before i can be able to make a lot of references i'm not saying that i have not been taught in a sense about um, islam of course they have taught us in a sense islam while we are in the school of theology just like how um, we hear um estes in a stand was saying of course they may not teach you very deep just like how some of you are very good at it but they have teach us to some level but then i feel like there's a need of me to want to revisit some of the things that i have learned so far because i have misplaced the book that the Quranic book I was having before I can I don't know where it is so but then I just have this and I want to read it I want to study it and then go day by day and then see how you understand it progresses but it nevertheless I just feels like um, maybe probably Yusuf S.T. school have wait a little bit we all know that at the council of nesia so many things happen so many things we are changed and all that so why don't we find a way of reversing some of those things but then to of people who feels like of course that we worship image we do not worship image we do not um worship human all right but we just believe that jesus is god just like how islam say it's a spirit of god right they believe you understand that in the birth of jesus and they believe that mary gave birth to jesus they believe that jesus did not die they believe that god took jesus to himself even though we don't necessarily tell here he is but they just know that jesus is going to return back someday which both the christians all believe that and then the muslim just feels like jesus did not die but then he was speared that he prayed and then god speared him of the dead and then another person in a sense god um crucified us based on some certain um hadith it's not all the muslim that believe in that very um narration but nevertheless whatever happened we all believe in what in hell we all believe in heaven and we all believe on the judgment day and then we just believe that we all are going to be judged it means that all of us are going to give an account but then i want to ask you do you believe with some of the things that you estes innocent was saying that makes him to convert but then the question is why should i make convert to a particular religion because of someone why not i make my own decision before innocent taking any decision instead of doing it because of someone well others do just like i said even if I made that very decision, I know a lot of people will also join. But then, we don't know about tomorrow. We don't know how things are going to be. But God knows better than we do. So this is the end of my video. If you like my reaction, you like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it in the comment section. And I'm going to check it out. So guys, you remain blessed. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.